Sword Quest was an action-adventure series on the Atari 2600. Four games, Earth World, Fire World, Water World, and Air World, were planned to be released periodically, with each game's story to flow into the next one. But it was much more than that. Each game came with a comic book published by DC Comics, which further elaborated on the story. Not only that, but the comic was essential to completing the contest. The contest I'm talking about is pretty much the whole purpose of the game in the first place. You play as a guy wandering around from room to room, most of which consist of nothing but more doors to walk through. Some rooms have items which you can pick up or drop off. The idea is to have the correct items placed in a room and you'll get a clue, which consists of two numbers, signifying the page number and panel, which you'd refer to in the comic to find a hidden word. There are five clues altogether, except in Waterworld there are four. Once you have all the hidden words discovered, you can send the sentence to Atari and get a chance to complete in the finals, which was a battle amongst the finalists using an edited version of the game. Whoever found the most clues in 90 minutes would win a prize. For Earthworld, the prize was an 18 karat gold talisman. For Fireworld, it was a gold and platinum chalice. For Waterworld, it was a golden crown. And for Airworld, it was supposed to be the Philosopher's Stone, a white jade in an 18 karat gold box. All of these prizes were valued at $25,000 each, plus the four winners would then be scheduled to face off in a four-way battle to determine the winner of the Ultimate Sword of Sorcery, a gold-handled sword made of silver valued at $50,000. That's $150,000 worth of prizes given away by Atari for the sake of a game. $150,000 in 1983 no less, not to mention the airfare and the accommodations given to the finalists for these contests. Now, there's some speculation that the value of these items have been exaggerated to some degree, but the materials were legitimately made of gold and silver and were encrusted with various jewels like rubies, diamonds, emeralds, etc. It was a pretty fucking generous prize to say the least, regardless if it weren't quite as valuable as listed. Unfortunately, only the first two contests came to pass. The contest for the third game, Waterworld, was cancelled, and the fourth game, Airworld, was never even made. Atari was having financial difficulty in 1984 and sold the company to new ownership, and the winners of the two contests received a settlement check of 15 grand each. So that's the overview of the contest and everything behind it, but what about the games themselves? Well, like I said, you're just wandering around from room to room, picking up items in one room and dropping them off in another. Without the contest taking place, there's no real reason for finding the clues, unless you just want to discover the puzzle regardless. If you don't have the comics in front of you, then the clues won't lead you to anything. And if you've discovered all the clues, there's hardly any replay value whatsoever because you've figured out everything you can, and there's really no fun in exploring the game. They're all just the same rooms with different colored backgrounds. One small piece of variety are the action screens, where you have to bypass a series of obstacles to get into a specific room. None of these screens are anything amazing, but they are the only parts of the game that are worth playing in the least. You'll either have to race across the screen avoiding spears, hop from platform to platform before smacking the edge of the screen, shoot at snakes, etc. These games are playable to an extent, but they're unspectacular to say the least, and you have to wander around through countless rooms just to find them. I know it sounds like I'm belittling this game unfairly because it was designed specifically as a contest at the time of release and is outdated and useless now, but regardless, it's still a very dull game. The only reason this was worth playing at all was the incentive of winning the prizes, which I'll give Atari credit for shelving out such extravagant prizes, and for at least coming up with a concept that was original. However, it was ill-conceived. It may have at least had some girth back when the contest was taking place, but there's no reason for anyone in their right mind to play it today. <laughs> 